something that CDT has been putting on here for the last few weeks. Uh, we'll, we're going to do one that's a little different today than what we've been doing in the past. Um, just kind of like what you see up here, uh, if you have questions, uh, we will not be answering those during the, the duration of the webcast just for time purposes. Um, but if you do have a question, if you put it into the questions portion of your uh, GoToMeeting or GoToWebinar uh, control pane over there on the right-hand side, um, we will get those answered towards the end of the end of the webcast. Okay? Uh, for those of you also, if you've never really used Webinar or GoToMeeting, uh, there's a little orange uh, arrow that points to the right-hand side um, if you, in your pane for the GoToWebinar. If you pick that little button, it actually collapses. For the purpose, for the time of the the webcast, collapses that you can bring it back out, uh, but it lets you see a little bit more of the screen. All right, so um, a lot of you know us. A little overview of who we are. Um, we are CDT. We are a reseller for PTC. For those of you that don't know exactly the relationship between. Uh, of our resellers and PTC, think of PTC as Ford and we're the Ford dealership. Uh, so we provide a number of different services, whether it is uh, education or software sales or consulting or implementations. Uh, as you see up on the screen here, we pretty much run um, um, all of the gamut of what PTC's products that they have out there. So whether, again, it's uh, Windchill, Creo, as you see up there, MathCat and Arbitax. And then we also do consulting, engineering consulting services also. We have a, fair, uh, a fairly competent staff here. Um, uh, we also do support that you see. Uh, we, you know, all of your support is actually ran through PTC, but if we, uh, we have time, uh, we will gladly get to your support calls whenever we can, any of our AEs that are out there. Uh, we do have training certified centers. Um, in Kansas City, Arlington, and St. Louis. Uh, they, again, those are the certified training centers in those areas. Uh, one thing that is kind of unique about CDT is that we do run one-person classes, which is uh, kind of different from most of the other VARs out there. Um, so if you're, if you're interested at any point in time with training, uh, don't be scared of uh, hopping in class and getting it canceled on you if you've ever had that happen to you before. Uh, my name is Ben Givhan. I actually work out of the uh, Arlington, Texas, or the Dallas area, and I am an applications manager. And for the most part, that's just a fancy, fancy name for a uh, for a tech guy or AE within the, within CDT. So the agenda for today, uh, we will be going over what is Creo Parametric uh, 1.0. We'll talk a little bit about what that is and some terminology as we go through. We will be talking a little bit about some of not only the enhancements visual enhancements, some of the fundamental enhancements within the software. We'll also cover what is the fr freestyle tool and then something called flexible modeling. For those of you that have been on some of our webcasts here in the past, we've been doing the flexible modeling as just that's it. You know, that, that's the only thing we've been doing on these Thursdays. But we'll kind of see an abbreviated version of that uh, and try to scrunch that down to the time that we have. But you'll see some of the other things that are new for Creo Parametric 1.0. We'll talk about those. We'll then go through the live demonstration, as you guys see here. Uh, I'll kind of go through a summary of what we just talked about. Uh, there is a, a special offer that we will that is uh, still available as of right now through PTC that we'll kind of throw a screen up so you can see that. And then we'll have some Q and A towards the end of the uh, towards the end of the webcast. All right. So those of you that are using uh, Creo, or that I shouldn't say Creo, it's just Creo now, but are using Wildfire 5 or what is Creo Elements Pro uh, 5.0, Wildfire 5 and back. Um, essentially, PTC has gone through a rebranding process on all their products, and now uh, there is a suite of products that they give. Okay, and really, what they did is came up with a family name of those products, and what they what they called it was Creo. So what Creo Parametric is is now, or excuse me, what Wildfire, Pro Engineer Wildfire now, is what is now Creo Parametric 1.0. Okay, so if you are using uh, Creo Elements Pro, what you see right here, that actually, if you go to download that, that is actually not Creo Parametric. Creo Elements Pro 5.0 is Wildfire 5, and then what they are turning that into with all the new interfaces and new things that they've come out with here, uh, with the release of Creo Parametric is 
Creole parametric. Okay, so a little bit of terminology that is we found that it's a little bit confusing to a, a number of our users, and whether they're old users or new users, sometimes you have to explain that just to make sure everybody knows what they're what they're looking at. Okay, uh, for the most part, you'll see some of the ch you'll see some changes that that we'll go through here during the the demonstration purposes, um, but for the most part, fundamentally. You know, there's no really difference fundamentally between Pro Engineer 5.0 and, and Creo Parametric. They've added on some things. They've made some things easier to use. The interface has changed, but there's nothing fundamentally different. Um, there is a product out there that is called uh, uh, Creo Direct, which is uh, which is essentially co-create. So if you've heard of Creo Direct, that is actually the direct modeling package, and we'll see portions of the direct modeling package today during the flexible modeling. Uh, portion of the webcast, but uh, that is not Pro-E as what uh, a lot of us would know it as. Okay. All right, from Wildfire 5, or what is now Creo Elements Pro 5.0, uh, they have over 750 enhancements, and obviously we won't be covering those during the webcast, but you see some really nice things that they, they've done. Um, you know, a lot of times you have, uh, you, you kind of don't necessarily want to change, especially when PTC goes through a very large interface change because of some of the issues you have and loss of productivity. Uh, hopefully today I'll be able to show you some of the tools that they put in, uh, not only into the interface, but just kind of how it makes sense now where you don't have as much of that fear if you're really looking and thinking about switching over to Creo Parametric 1.0 from whatever uh, uh, from whatever version that you may be running. One of the tools that we'll be covering today is the freestyle tool. This is actually a free download, and I'll stress that free download from PTC. Uh, you can just download it, and anybody can use this. Uh, this is though only a Creo parametric only specific app, so you can't use this with Wildfire 5 or Creo Elements Pro 5.0. Um, you cannot use that with with Wildfire 5, so it is a Creo 1.0 only. Uh, but you'll kind of see what this is capable of. It's kind of this. Uh, conceptual design. Uh, let me just take some big free-flowing surfaces and not build all these relationships, but kind of push and pull and do some different things with it, um, and kind of take this this blob of material and kind of form it into something that I want. So, if you're not a big surfacing guy, but you need to make some really nice big free-flowing shapes just for some mock-up purposes or for later, for turning it into some actual product that you might make, uh, this might be a tool that you uh, you would use. We will also cover something called the Flexible Modeling Extension. Again, for those of you that have been on some of our other webcasts, the Flexible Modeling Extension is a really nice tool. Uh, essentially what they've done is taken uh, a number of different what are direct modeling ideas and concepts, and they have put them into the, uh, into the Creo Parametric 1.0 interface. So uh, the idea of editing and manipulating geometry at the geometry level. Um, and again, I'll, I'll brush on that because of time purposes and some of the other things that we are covering, but just kind of see some cool things that uh, you have the ability to do with the Creo uh, Flexible Modeling Extension. This is a separate, uh, you don't, this doesn't come along with Creo Parametric. Um, this is something that you actually have to purpose, and this is the actual uh, time-limited offer that is now out for PTC. And after you see this, if it's something that you might be interested in but like to see a little bit more, because again, I won't be able to show everything, uh, feel free to contact any one of us, whether it's me, that, you know, put my information up, or Rosa Linda, or for those of you that know some of our other sales guys within the area, uh, just just uh, shoot them some information, and I'm sure we could get a, a little bit more in-depth demo uh, that, uh, than what you would see today. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and jump into demonstration again for time purposes. We have a lot to cover. Uh, I want to make sure I get to that and then also have some time at the end. Um, what um, uh, At this time, let's go ahead and we do have two or three poll questions uh, that I'd like you to answer. So, Rosalinda, if you'd like to just run through those, uh, get your answers, and let's go ahead and go on to the next one, and then let me know when we're done, and I'll get started, okay? I just posted it. Can everyone see?
And we have one more. Okay, we're ready to go. All right. Thank you so much. All right, guys. So um, we'll have probably about 30, uh, 40 minutes worth of demonstrations, and we'll go ahead and just dive into it. Um, all I have here is just opened up the uh, Creo Parametric 1.0, the Creo Parametric 1.0 interface. So uh, if those of you have seen uh, seen some of the webcasts or at the, the world events, obviously this is kind of familiar to you. For those of you not, and this is the first time, this is essentially what, uh, Wildfire 5 has become. Um, if you're using Wildfire 5, if you're using Wildfire 4 or something before that, uh, you were not introduced to the, what is called the ribbon interface at all. In Wildfire 5, they introduced the ribbon interface in the drawing mode. Um, there were some things that were uh, a little less undesirable about the interface. They actually have made some corrections in the Creo parametric interface and made it a little bit easier to deal with and if I get some time to get at least into the drawing mode you'll you'll see that and I don't know if I will or not but they have made some changes that made it easier to deal with that. Um, so all I'm going to do here is just you know just do a file new and we'll kind of cover some of the things that we've been talking about or what we, I will talk about. Uh, but when you hop into a, a new part this is the new interface okay so kind of like what you saw again if you're using Wildfire 5 what they now have are tabs. They have tabs and underneath those tabs there that are there are commands that are specific to those tabs. So you see here all of your modeling commands and you see some stuff for modeling and if we add some geometry you see holes and rounds and mirrors and again all the things that you do for regular modeling. Um, this is the flexible modeling extension. I'll get to that here in just a second. Here's your annotate tab. So all of your 3D notes and dimensions and GD and T work. They have made some decent improvements to uh, to your, your 3D annotations and even though we won't cover that maybe we'll cover that uh, in, a, in a future webcast analysis tools. There we are. You see your distances and mass properties and things that you would expect to see uh, for as analysis. So essentially what they've done is grouped commands specific to a tab. Okay, And this is great. It, it makes sense to what where these commands are at. So if you want to get to the analysis tab and or to the measuring tab, you kind of get to the analysis and pick it. Now, for those of you that are a little leery of this, what they have done is made a command search tool. So if I go back to my modeling tab and you know, notice that there is the extrude tool here, but let's say I'm in the analysis tab and I have no idea where a command is at, no idea where it's at, don't know where to go and find it. What I can do is come in and use this little command search. And what it does is if I know the command name, I can start to type in what that command is. And if I hover over that command, notice how it actually takes me to the tab, the modeling tab, and then it also highlights the extrude. So as long as you know the name of your command, and you actually can initiate this from here, as long as you know the name of your command, you can easily go find it. And so for those of you that, again, a little bit leery about switching interfaces and having trouble finding things, they put something, which essentially what this does is, is, uh, is take the place of the menu manager of what was in the previous versions, but it allows you to go ahead and search for your commands and easily find those commands so you're not hunting around and trying to dig into 15 different different uh, tabs that you have. Okay? Also, what they made it easy to do is customize this interface. So what I have the ability to do is right click and say customize the ribbon. And what you will see here is your ribbon essentially in tabs and then also the tools and items underneath those tabs. So if I expand the modeling, we see operations, you have operations and get data and all those other things that go along with it. Okay. But let's say that I didn't want specific tabs. So one of the custom tabs that I have in here is the bend tab. So if I uncheck it, see how things start to go away, right? So really what this allows you to do is take and uh, take away and also add tabs that you have. So in this bend tab that I have, if I go ahead and pick it, notice how I have put some tools in to the bend tab. And all I did was come down here and say new tab and create the tab. And now what I can do is at any point in time drag any number or any one of these commands into 
my, I think Otto Ron was already there, let's put this one in, okay, into my tab that I have, okay. So if I really wanted to, if I really wanted to, what I could do is come in and get rid of all of the tabs that you see up here, and if I only use 15 or 20, uh, 20 commands for whatever reason, I could get rid of all the commands that I don't use and just create one big tab for me or create two tabs and get rid of all the stuff that I don't use and I don't have to use any of the preset stuff that's out of the box uh, for uh, that comes from PTC. Okay, So they made it really nice to customize the tab and made it easy and for those of you that are wondering these now the, the dot they're called dot UI files so config.win has gone away and they replace it now with a dot UI file. This dot UI file is not only specific for regular parts what we see right here, but anything that comes along in Sketcher or Assembly or whatever it may be, all of those alterations are recorded in this dot UI file and then they can be given to other users or saved off for whatever reason that you see fit in the future. Okay. So gave it a nice way, a nice way to uh, to customize that interface. So again if you're not again not overly uh, thrilled about this, you do have the ability to customize it and do those types of things. Now, for those of you that were along for the Wildfire 5, uh, for the Wildfire 5 uh, uh, interface change for drawings, you notice that, you know, if I want to turn on datum planes, notice how that command is not in the modeling tab. And so to do that, if I, and I'll show you how you get around that, but to do that, you'd actually have to come into the view tab and then turn them off from right here. Well, a lot of users complained about that with PTC in the drawing mode because to apply a dimension you had to do the same type of function. So what they've added is this little quick access toolbar and what they put is usually the most common is the most common visual type commands. So notice how the turning on or turning off for datums is in this quick access toolbar and I have the ability to check mark just like we did over here check mark any one of these commands to put them in and or out of that interface, okay, so I don't want to see the spin center or whatever it may be, I want to see orient and, and view manager. So what they've done, again, is giving you access to common commands within your interface so you don't have to go in and dig in through your tabs just to find those types of things. One of the questions that everybody asks me is that, is this customizable, can I add other things to it? And the answer is no. What you see right here is what you get, that would be very nice, but unfortunately you can't do that, okay. Uh, other things to be aware of. Okay, is if you go down here, a little thing that's different, if you'll see this manage file, you'll see some commands specific for manage file. Prepare, you'll see your model properties and model check functions, all of this prepare. prepare. Manage session, uh, your uh, windshield server hookup, you know, select working directories, even though those are in the interface, here's some of those other tools. And then also if you go to options and configuration editor, here's your config.pro. Alright, so options, file options, there it is, configuration editor, and here's your config.pro. That is still a config.pro file, but also notice, also notice that they've taken a lot of the system colors and, sec and sketcher settings and assembly settings and sheet metal settings, and what they've done is condensed them into one specific Creo parametric options dialog box. So the things that were under tools and then under file and then over here and over there, they again try to make it where you come and have this one-stop shop where you're making all your environment and settings and whatever it may be for whatever little areas you're in uh, within within Creo Parametric and just giving the ability to know where to go so you don't have to fumble and fight and always have to remember where those things are. Okay, so all of the Creo Parametric options, including licensing and config.pro and all the environments and colors are here, and again, it just makes it easy to get at. Okay, all right. So enough of the kind of uh, on top stuff and interface stuff. Um, some, some specific differences that you see uh, about Creo Parametric right away that, that, that makes sense. Um, for those of you that have been around for a while, uh, a lot of times, or I shouldn't say a lot of times, most of the time the way that you create shapes within ProE is you, you start the extrude tool and then from there, from starting extrude tool, you sketch internally. Because we have the, uh, because we have the the training sites, we also teach now, and the way that PTC teaches it is that you start your sketch tool, and then from starting your sketch tool, you, you create a sketch and you start your extrude. And that's fine, and, and, and everybody does it in a different way. But what PTC has done now is giving you a little bit different and a way to bypass a number of different functions and picks and clicks when you start to create your shapes and your extrudes. 
So if you notice now, if I pick a datum plane and I start the extrude tool, notice how it directly takes me in to Sketcher and then here is your Sketcher interface. Okay? So I am now in Sketcher and then also by default it starts out in the 3D mode for Sketcher. If I wanted to look at it in 2D mode, you can config.pro it so it starts out in 2D, but I also can come in and just say I want to pick it. So instead of having to start the extrude tool, pick a datum plane, and then say um, uh, right datum plane to the right and then say OK, as long as you pick a datum plane or you pick a surface first, you directly get into Sketcher and it bypasses some of those functions that you would have there, some of those picks and clicks that you would have to get through. Okay? Uh, a few different tools that they have here, and I'll cover one specifically, and we'll get into a few different things as we go along. Um, notice how they do have now have a center rectangle, so you can start center rectangle just by uh, just by picking the middle and dragging out. You don't have to put in um, center lines just to get those things to snap to center now. So you have the center rectangle. Also notice that the uh, that the sketcher diagnostic tools are on by default, so you do get a shaded a shaded section by default uh, when you are creating sketches so you know that you have closed or open sketches. Okay, When I'm done, I'll just say OK. And then notice now, again, there it is. Notice a little bit of the difference in coloring changes. Okay, You see coloring changes. And then one thing that's, that's a little bit different, and I'll cover this a little bit more, is that by default now, the auto regeneration piece within Creo Parametric is on by default. Okay. So notice how even though I'm coming in, and even though I'm using the preview part of what you would see here, I can drag back and forth, and then I also have the ability to drag and manipulate the sketch that I use. And I'll kind of kind of go in on that a little bit more here in just a second. But I have the drag functions that I have right here. I have my drag functions because of the auto regenerate process that we'll talk about here in just a second, and we'll go ahead and finish that part. Okay? Again, if I pick a top surface, there it is, and start stop the extrude tool right here. Okay, I directly go into Sketcher, and then also what I want you to notice is I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and delete this guy right here, delete this guy right here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start my line tool now. Even though I don't have any, even though I don't have any references, what I can do is hold the Alt button and on the fly pick references to attach to. So by holding the Alt button, kind of what you notice here is you can kind of see my point right here. I can hold the Alt button, see how it leaves that button, that point right there, and then I can pick other objects that become references that I then at that point in time I now can snap to. So what it allows you to do is do reference selection on the fly within the context of a tool that again I can come in and reference in any form. Okay. So let's go ahead, let's just draw a shape here. Here we are. There it is. Drag it right there. Okay. There's my shape that I have. Again, we'll just say OK. Now, also notice is that config.pro option, there's a config.pro option that allows me to come in and drag from an extrusion and now drag back and forth. And what you see here is that it goes from adding material to removing material and that you see the little warning that says, hey, you are now removing material. So what you see here is if I drag down to removing material, I don't have to come up and pick the button. It automatically assumes that. I'll kind of drag it out to the size that I want. There we are. I say OK. And there's my shape I have. Okay. Now, I talked a little bit of just a minute ago about what is the auto regenerate command or function that is on by default now. If I come into this extrude right here, and if I edit this extrude, by default in the past, okay, only if you use dynamic edit was this possible, but by default now, if I edit this shape or edit the definition of this shape, notice how now as I drag through all of the other, all of the other features that are attached to this extrude, in this case it's just the one that we have, is actually moving right along with it. So as you are dragging, you see real-time regeneration of what those of what those commands may be. If I right click and hold, this little auto regenerate function is what's telling me or, or what's instructing uh, Creo Parametric to auto regenerate any children as I'm doing an edit uh, or an edit definition as we're changing features that you have. If you don't want this because it's cumbersome or it's taking a lot of power away from your uh, power away from uh, what you have going on because you have a lot of uh, children regenerating, then you can turn it off and you don't have those uh, have those functions that you have to deal with. Okay, uh, by default now that is turned on, and again you can see things dragging and manipulating.
manipulating. And again, all this is done during the edit portion within Creo Parametric. All right, so just a few different, uh, few different commands that we kind of run through again for the the the, the purpose of the time or time idea. We can't really get into a lot of the other features that they have changed uh, within ProE. Uh, one thing that I will get into here quickly is the changes that they have made uh, to assembly. What I'm going to do here is just open up an assembly that I have. So what they have done is eliminated the insert, mate, and, uh, and, uh, and align commands and replaced them with coincident and distance, and that's it. Because for all of you guys on here that are familiar with assembly techniques, really the only difference between a mate and a line is a flip of the button. Okay, and we'd have to go in and say, all right, we want to switch between from coincident or type in zero and then change it to offset. So now what you'll see here is if I go ahead and pick this subassembly, and you will see in the placement tab now and through the drop downs, here are your commands that you use uh, within assembly. Okay, now I'll kind of I'll actually unassemble or I'll delete one of these uh, components and we'll put it back in just so you have an idea of how it works. Okay, but here are now your assembly commands. And they make sense as far as how you're using them. Okay, so let me show you this. If I take this cover and this subassembly, go ahead and delete those guys, and if I assemble back in the cover, okay, first of all, one thing you're going to notice is the 3D dragger. So this replaces the control, alt, and middle mouse button, right mouse button. You still can use those if you want to. Okay, and what I'm going to do is say I want that surface and that surface. Now it assumes it's a normal, right? It's a normal command. Well, we don't want it to be normal. What we want to do is come in and we want this to be a coincident. Okay, so there is coincident. Now the differences between mate and align are just a flip of the button. That's it. Okay, if I pick on it again here, and I want it to be, I want it to be a distance. I now have the ability again to drag it from a distance. But again, all I do is flip from one side to the other between essentially mate and mate and align. So we'll go ahead and change it back to coincident. Okay, I'll go ahead and add a new constraint. Notice the difference in color changes. There's one more. Add in one more new constraint. We'll go from there to there. Notice the color change from purple to orange. We say okay, and there we are. Okay. So a little bit different as far as how you assemble things, but it makes sense once you just someone kind of explains the idea of what uh, what you're trying to get out of it. Okay. So again, just some just some very high level changes that they have made. Uh, again, interface wise and some differences in modeling and then some assembly uh, changes in terminology. But as you can see, most of this stuff is pretty straightforward. Most of it is also fairly productive uh, as far as uh, as far as user wise and time well spent. Uh, I kind of like the changes that they have have made in some of the the ways that you can get some things done now uh, within within Pro E or Creo Parametric 1.0 as a whole. All right, so from here, uh, again, we'll kind of cover some a uh, few different other types of tools that we have. Again, for time purposes, we've got to kind of keep pushing through this stuff. Uh, let's go ahead and close these things down. All right. One of the uh, one of the commands or tools now that are with that you, again the free download that you have is something called the freestyle tool, and again just for for quick purposes here we'll kind of do something kind of quick and dirty. Let's say that instead of having this little ball in for this handle, I actually wanted to create my own little hand form fitting handle that I have. So what I'm going to do here is actually put in a uh, what I'm going to do is put in a freestyle blob and then shape it. To what I want um, for for this part. So go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and pick this. Let's go ahead and drag this guy up. Okay. I'm going to say I want to start that shape somewhere right about right here. There we are. Let's kind of move it over. Let's move that shape up. There it is. Okay. And then from here, what I have the ability to do is manipulate and push and pull this specific little blob. So it starts out with what is called a primitive. Okay, and I have a sphere. I can start out with the, uh, with the cylinder or some other type of shapes that I have. And then what I have the ability to do is manipulate and pull this guy into the shape that I want. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and square off the bottom. Let's go ahead 
and pick an edge right here, and I'm going to say I want to split that edge into four objects, split this bottom edge into four objects, and then make some little hand, uh, some little hands or finger spaces that I have right here. Again, for those of you that have ever tried to do this with surfacing work and trying to do uh, specific, um, uh, specific uh, surfacing and doing all those things just for conceptual work, you can find this to be a, not necessarily difficult, but a little bit more time consuming. But allow what this allows me to do is create conceptual shapes uh, quickly and easily, and just kind of push and pull on different things and create essentially uh, nice free flowing surfaces that. Uh, that you then can solidify or you know create a few of them just to look in a different ways. And again, uh, we won't talk how we won't talk uh, too much about how how my freestyle skills are, but there's my version of the handle that I have. Okay. Again, I could solidify this and actually create it into a solid if I want to. But by default, they start out as surfaces, and then from that point, uh, you then could do what you want as far as, as solid wise. Okay. So just a quick way to create some conceptual things, and there's a lot of different tools within the freestyle command. Uh, that allow you get a lot uh, that allow you to get a lot of different things done. Okay. All right, so that is the flexible tool, and again, this is a, uh, excuse me, this is the freestyle tool, and again, this is a free download from PTC. All right, the other thing that we'll cover here, uh, if we come in, is we'll come cover what is the flexible modeling tool. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is a few different things. I'm going to go ahead and open up a Pro E part. There's a Pro E part, and then I'm also going to go ahead and open up. Uh, let's open up here a step file. Okay. So this is true import geometry. Okay. True import geometry. So what the the flexible modeling tool is is that it is a number of different tools that have been taken from the from the direct idea that PTC and co-create uh, uh, that they have in the uh, Creo Direct or what is the Creo Elements Direct 5.0 tool. And what they've done is put them into the Pro-E or the Creo Parametric Interface and allow you to do direct type manipulation and edits but within that context. Okay, So if any of you that are on the call uh, have the need to manipulate step or IGIS or import geometry in any form, this could be something that's really interesting for you. Okay, We also have the ability to not only manipulate and edit IGIS and or step data, but also manipulate uh, Pro-E data. Okay? So if you have the flexible modeling extension, what it is is a tab, and again it looks very similar to these functions, but what it allows you to do is again manipulate and edit geometry. And again, whether it's Pro-E geometry or not, it doesn't make a difference. Okay, so one thing that you have to realize is that let's say that I wanted to take this entire group of features and I wanted to move them two inches this way for whatever reason. Okay, a lot of times those changes and those functions, depending on how you built it and what's related to it, you might have some things related to it that that could be a problem parametrically within Creo Parametric or Pro E. Okay. But let's just say I wanted to move these things. Now, one thing that you'll notice is that I could easily come in here and hold the shift button and pick all of these surfaces to move or all of this geometry. But what you will find is that within the flexible modeling tool, what it gives you is smart selection ideas. So if you notice, if I come in here, pick, come in here, pick this surface and say, I want the boss with all secondary objects, notice how it's selected all those objects. And then what I'm going to do is say, I want to move this object and I want to move this object along that edge that far. There it is. I say OK. And what I've done is moved all of those parametric features, okay, all of these parametric features. Okay, there it is. If I go back to the modeling tab, okay, if I go back to the group, okay, if I go back in and pick that hole, I'm sure that's down here somewhere. Okay, if I go in and pick that specific hole, Right, I would go in and then, I, again, if I had to manipulate this in uh, uh, Pro-E, I would have to go in and manipulate it one by one and hopefully all the parametrics work. But what you see down at the bottom of your model tree, let me kind of minimize this so you can see this, is this move command. So it still pays all these underlying parametrics are still there, but what it puts in is a move feature that then, if I want to at any point in time, again, I don't have to be in the flexible modeling tool, come back in, do an edit the definition, and then again move, however, I want to. 
Okay, so move it back, move it back and forth. There it is. And I have manipulated again this pro e data, but all the parametrics are there, but that's not that big a deal because I've just created a flexible move feature within the bottom of the model tree. At the same time, if I come over here in flexible modeling, I say I want that wall, hold the control button and that wall to move. I then say a move. But this time, this time I want to move by a specific distance. So I'm going to say I want that guy. And I want to move it in relationship to the other side. Go ahead and pick it. And I want to move this out so the distance now is 500. So all I do is come out and drag it. Drag it out to 500. Somewhere close. We could type in a dimension if we wanted to. Okay. There's my 500 dimension. I say OK. And then there again, what I've done is move this wall out. And if I wanted to bring along these features, I could easily bring along these features. Okay. All I would have to do is pick those walls, come in, hold the control button, pick my other my other features that I have, use my smart or recognize commands that I have within the interface, and then move those also. We have a offset command, okay, or offset, and in this case, move analytic works very similar. If I pick this uh, surface and say, all right, I want to recognize the entire cut, and then I want to offset, notice how I drag those guys out. And again, what am I manipulating? I'm manipulating that hole without actually manipulating any of the underlying parametrics that go along with it. Okay. Same thing here. If I come over here, pick this surface and say I want rounds with all the secondary rounds, notice how I have an edit round command. And again, I'm editing the rounds. There's my edit of the round. I say OK, and it allows me to do this. This also, not only is this nice for, for Pro e changers that pro e changers that you're not trying to get caught up with all the parametrics and relations that you have built, but this is also nice and easy for users that don't have a lot of pro e experience. If you don't have a lot of pro e experience and you're looking to make some changes for some difference in concepts or some moves or some changes, you're not going to actually build anything in this tool, but you have the ability to modify geometry within this tool, and that you don't have to know exactly all the dynamics of how pro e works just to get that done. If I go back into this I just part, or the step file, excuse me, the step file that I have, it works the exact same way. If I come over here and pick this wall, again, it's just an import feature, and then do the move command. Uh, we don't want to do it with the distance. We'll do it with just by, oops, sorry guys, just with the dragger. Go ahead and drag out. Notice how the geometry actually, actually adapts as far as shape-wise to how it's supposed to move. Okay. So it's adapting. We're not just dragging out and creating some crazy geometric shapes. It actually adapts the geometry to and appropriately how it should move. I say OK, and I have now drug out that wall. If I come over here and pick this surface right here, I'll say I want all of my uh, cuts with all of my secondary objects. If I do an offset command, notice how also the round adapts and moves right along with that shape also. Okay, So there's the moving. The round moves right along with it. If I come over here and pick this shape and say I want the balls with all of the secondary objects, I'll go ahead and move this guy by using the dragger. Notice how I'll drag it over here to the right. There it is. I also can move it up. Notice how when I drag it up, notice how the geometry adapts. There it is. The notice how the geometry adapts and extends out that surface, that little flat surface that we had here. So it's still connected as a solid. There we are. There it is. Now again, for those of you that are doing FEA uh, type functionality, um, a lot of times you're, you're looking to reduce the number of features and round and chamfers and those type things. Again, just because this is an I, a step part, if I come over here and pick the round and say round was secondary and do an edit, notice how I'm actually manipulating the step, the step round again and drag it back and forth. There it is. Okay. I also have the ability to go in and remove these rounds if I wanted to. Let's say I want this round and recognize all the secondary rounds. I'm going to say remove. Okay, it removed all those rounds from your uh, step part. If I pick this round also right here and do a round with secondary and remove that one also. Notice how I'm removing those rounds and chamfers or whatever it may be uh, for the purposes again, whether it's FEA work or whatever have you. And if I want to, again, if I go back in and just drag my insert mode up above the removes, right? go back into this edit round, do an edit definition. right? Essentially what we have here are just uh, features that are flexible type features within your model tree that you can go back at any point in time and then change those as you see fit. There we are. 
drag the insert back down um, below the removes, and there you have it. Okay. All right, so just some fly-through type things. Well, I, let me show. Let me show one more thing here in the uh, in the flexible modeling function. Uh, if I go ahead and come back in, and I'm going to open up uh, the substitute part right here. Okay, there's been a replace command that has been in the uh, that has been within ProE for a number of different years. And essentially what you could do is you could hit the offset button and then hit the replace surface feature and you say I want to replace this surface with a, uh, a different surface that I have. So notice how what I have here is a ProE part with all the ProE features that you see right here. If I come in and here what I have is an extruded surface. This is just a regular extruded surface, okay? Just a regular extruded surface and I'll manipulate this here in just a second. But if I come into my flexible modeling tool and hit the substitute command, what I can say is I want to replace that surface with this surface. Now, what's really cool about this is that what happens is that ProE reconstructs all of the rounds that were associated with that surface that were on the top. So it just doesn't cut it off. It reconstructed the outside round and all of these internal rounds that you have right here. And when I'm done, there's my result that I have. So as it regenerates, okay, there's my result right there. Or again, what's really different about this is that re it reconstructs all of the features. So if you had a lot of chamfers or, and again, rounds in this case, all of those would rebuild within the context of that part. If I come in and edit the definition uh, and go back in and change this internal shape and drag this guy a little bit lower, there we are. Again, as soon as it, as soon as it regenerates, what you'll see here is a change in how that is how you uh, have the ability to manipulate and substitute those those surfaces that you have. So again, if you want to make quick changes, see what a different, see what a surface would look like at another different angle or some different curvature to it, you have the ability to do that within the flexible modeling tool and what is the substitute command within the flexible modeling tool. Okay. Um, again, because of time purposes and for question, uh, uh, for a question and answer period, um, I wanted to leave about 15 minutes at the end uh, for, for question and answers. Let me pull back up my PowerPoint, see if I have at the end of my PowerPoint. Um, so again, guys, you've seen some of the things that we, we some of the things that the PTC has changed within the software. Um, if at any point in time you'd like a little bit more in-depth, uh, an in-depth demo that you would like to go to, f please feel free to contact uh, myself. There it is, myself and or Rosa Linda. Um, the, Rosa Linda was the, uh, the nice young lady that sent out the, the emails to everybody, the blast to everybody where you responded to. Uh, feel free to shoot some information and we can give you a little bit more in depth of a demo. Uh, for the time right now, and I don't know exactly when this ends, if you are interested in the flexible modeling extension, you have the ability uh, to purchase this at a fairly cheap price. Notice the price, it's 1500 bucks, and for the, for the, the uh, for the functionality that you have and, the, uh, and some of the abilities that you have in the software, that's a fairly nice price. Um, and also, you get your first free, uh, first year of maintenance free, also with it. Okay. Um, so, if there, let me go ahead and check and see if there are any questions at this time. Uh, we'll go ahead and open it up to any questions that you might have. So, f please feel free to type any questions within the interface uh, of your. Uh, go to webinar. If you if you collapse it, go ahead and expand it back out using the air the the orange arrows. So go ahead and push it back out to the to the left, and it should expand back out. Expand back out. If not, um, that pretty much concludes our Thursday webcast. We tend to keep these nice and short because everybody's busy and everybody's trying to eat and do those things. Um, so again, if you if you're if you're falling back off or you're falling off the webcast at this time, thanks for attending, um, and we will have a number of these coming up here in the future. Uh, Rosalinda or Marco, or is there anything you'd like to add at this time? Replays will also be available on our YouTube page and I can send links to our previous uh, webinar, the Flexible Modeling Extension webinar, and also, also today's webinar. We'll keep it open here for the next next uh, three or four minutes, five minutes, unless we, uh, unless everybody falls off.
also for attendees on the webcast, if you uh, would like to ask a uh, question and speak a question, raise your hand and we will unmute you so that you can ask your question to the group. Thank you, Marco. I'm not seeing any questions, so if you would like to wrap up, that that's fine with me. Okay. All right. So for those of you again that are still kind of hanging on, uh, thanks for thanks for attending. Um, if for some reason you do have a question here in the future, again, feel free to contact uh, either myself directly or Rosa Linda. Um, I'll leave this up here for just a few minutes. Well, it looks like we have one. Oh, Glenn said thanks. Um, for those of you, again, I'll leave this up here for just uh, a few minutes. Uh, write this down. Shoot me an email or shoot Rosalinda. There's my direct number and her direct number, and we'll get anything uh, answered that we can. We'll leave this up here for just uh, another minute or two. Thank you.